I would like to take this opportunity to talk because I have now finished my watch of the entire Disney animated canon. Mm. Mm. And if I may, I'll just talk about that. If that's cool. I wanted yeah, an opportunity we, to do that. Yeah, I can work with that. Because I don't right, think cool. we have any other Disney movies on our list. Right. We already did Ichabod and Mr. Toad, which was yeah. an animated movie and will come up in this discussion briefly. But yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, good time to talk about it then. All right. So let's start at the bottom. There's There are six. We'll get through this pretty quick. But there are 61 movies that have been released in the by Disney Animation Studios, official Disney canon. Starting with Home on the Range, which is the less said about this movie, the better. This is the worst Disney movie ever released. It stars Roseanne. It didn't feel like anyone knew what the hell was going on when they were making this movie. Characters are talking, but it doesn't feel like they're talking to each other. And uh, Judy Dench's participation in it did not help it be good. Do you remember anything about Home on the Range? Uh, I remember I saw it at the theater when it came out. I think I reviewed it maybe for the newspaper. Uh, I remember, yeah, it was terrible, super unmemorable. Yeah, not good. I mentioned last week that I got caught up on um, on a trivia question about Over the Top because I couldn't remember that Kenny, or I never knew really that Kenny Loggins had done a song on that soundtrack or done most of the soundtrack, despite the fact that I'd recently seen that movie. This was also <laughs> a trivia question that tripped me up a year ago because it was just like, what Disney movie came out in 2004 about a farm? And I was like, none. There's no movie like that. So that's bad. All right. Number 60 is The Black Cauldron. This was an interesting one because it came out during a changing of the guard in Disney Animation Studios. It was the first time in a while that they had done a movie that had human characters or that was starred human characters, featured human characters. Because for a long time, the animators did not feel comfortable that they could draw realistic looking enough human characters. So most of the 70s and early 80s didn't have them. And it didn't work out. It's an interesting one because it has that Don Bluth style animation. If you're if you've seen like All Dogs Go to Heaven or The Secret of Nim or Rockadoodle or I don't know, like Don Bluth movie, the, the Penguin and the Pea or whatever the hell it's called. He has an interesting animation style, but this movie is just deathly dull, really boring. The only thing this movie has going for it is that John Huston narrated the first few minutes and that guy's voice is gold. Amazing. Yeah. Do you remember this movie at all? I'm not sure if I have. I don't remember it. Um, no, not at all. So then next I have Salados Amigos right there at the bottom. And yep. right after that, I have Chicken Little, which is just another one that I think is duty and yep. was early on in Disney's. It was one of their first computer animated films and they did not have it down yet. It's very ugly and boring and bad. Yeah. And Zach Braff is just a no go for me. Fair enough. OK, so next we have our first what I know is going to be a disagreement because we've talked about this recently. I have Ralph Breaks the Internet at number 57. I just did not think there was any reason for this movie to exist. Oh, I remember liking it. I took my kid to it. Honestly, I don't think I've watched it since it came out. That was like five years ago. But I remember thinking it was a solid follow up to a better, you know, the, the the far superior original. I just thought that the original said everything that needed to be said about video games and, yeah. and you know, being your true self. This didn't do it for me. Next to the Three Caballeros, which is the sequel to Salados Amigos. Yeah, just not great. In fact, the Three Caballeros at least introduced an interesting character. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jose Carioca, I think his name was. Jose. Kind of surprised that Jose the Parrot didn't like last in Disney animation more. He's been in a few cartoons, but not a lot. And then next is Melody Time, which was another one of those World War II era compilation movies. It was like Johnny Appleseed, which is weirdly very Christian, like overt Christian Mm. iconography throughout the movie. Talking about doing the Appleseeds for God. Very strange. Oh, World War II was a Yeah. And then next is Peter Pan, which is just horribly racist and more boring than I remembered it being. Yeah. And then Meet the Robinsons, which is another just like the animation. It looks like Jimmy Neutron. I I talked to your wife about this when you guys came to town <laughs> for my wedding. Mm. Um, I was I was like, You like Meet the because you told me she liked it. She does, yeah. And then I was I asked her, I'm like, but it looks like Jimmy Neutron. She goes, Yeah, I like Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. Um, but it just looks cheap and kind of bad to me. Yeah. So the next four, I'm going to go through quickly because I don't have time to say about them, but The Rescuers, which was one of those 1977 movies they made because they weren't great at doing humans, human characters. So they did mice and birds and it starred Bob Newhart and Ava Gabor. It was sort of like early on doing those celebrity voices, but mm. Bob Newhart and Ava Gabor are not, are not and have never been big stars. So, and That's then true. next up and, and then next is Make My Music, another one of those compilation movies. Maybe you've seen the Singing Whale skit, but. You, I'm sure not. It's actually, it's not even on Disney Plus. So oh, gross. There's, there's a chance you haven't seen it. The Fox and the Hound. I was just surprised by how bored I was watching this because I, I remember really liking it as a kid. And some people on my letterbox have given it five stars, but hmm. have you seen it? Not in a very long time. Yeah. You don't have it marked on letterbox. And then next, this one, I probably do have to talk about a little bit. Uh, so Dinosaur. Mm, yeah. Which I've seen fairly recently, actually. So this movie's not great. It's not abysmal. 
but it looks not great. And the reason it looks not great is this movie was pretty much made as a way for Disney animators to get acquainted with computer animation, like to learn how to do it, to exercise, to show what they could do and to push the medium forward. But it's real early days type stuff. And it looks real bad. Yeah. And the story, the story isn't interesting in any way or anything either. There's not a whole lot going on there. I mean, there's a there's a meteor strike at the beginning of the movie, which I was like, oh, my God, are they going to kill all the characters right away? Yeah. No. <laughs> Turns out it was a different meteor. Yeah. But not uh, that meteor. Not that meteor. Yeah. Not that Holocaust. Different. Yeah. Holocaust. <laughs> but not good. Don't recommend unless you're really interested in the history of animation, in which case it's the beginning. Yeah. We already talked about the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. But right here is where it landed on my list at number 48. And then right behind that, I think we're going to disagree again because I have Tarzan here, mostly because I watched this and couldn't remember any of it a week later. Mm, yeah, no, I love Tarzan. I think Tarzan's great. Um, I won't ask you to say more. Oh, we'll just talk a little bit about I know you like the soundtrack. Tell me a bit about what you like about the soundtrack. Oh, I, well, I love Phil Collins. I'm just a, an unabashed, unapologetic Phil Collins fan. I love the songs in it. My kid was really into when she was a baby. The You'll Be In My Heart was, you know, a song that we sang to her, you know, sing her to sleep, you know, when she was little. And yeah, it's a personal attachment as well as I, I just really, you know, I really enjoy the movie. I think it's good. Fair enough. Uh, and then the next one we also disagree on. You gave Fantasia five stars and so did a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's pretty boring. I think it was three, <laughs> three stars for me. OK, yeah, I think I just I think it's really cool, especially different for what they were doing at the time. I like the episodic nature of it. And I think, it, yeah, I think it's kind of classic. I might have just like cell phone brain, but I liked Fantasia 2000 more than Fantasia. I don't think I've seen that one all the way through. Oh, it's worth checking out. There's some really cool stuff on it. There's one. So I have Fantasia 2000 at number 30 on the list. And that's right smack in the middle. I gave it three and a half stars. There's a really great skit, uh, Rhapsody in Blue, and it's based on New Yorker cartoons. It's incredible. But after Fantasia, I have like a one-two punch of Pocahontas and then Hercules, which came out around the same time. And both, I was just like, yeah, these are fun. But I even now, I don't remember. Like the songs aren't... Pocahontas has more memorable songs than Hercules. I can remember one song from Hercules and I think two from Pocahontas. Both, like I don't know, Mel Gibson just did not sound like he was interested in being in that movie. He sounded really bored. Yeah. Um, Christian Bale, though. Yeah, for like five seconds. And his character is such a doofus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, same thing. You got another right wing weirdo in, in Hercules with with uh, James. What's his name? James Woods. And James Woods is at least sounds like he's into it. Like really. Oh, right. Yeah, he's, he's probably he's the best part it, of that movie, frankly. Yeah, he's given it his all. But I just don't find it that interesting. In fact, all the all my memories of Hercules come from the video game Kingdom Hearts. They don't come from the movie. <laughs> there was a part where I was like, where is the scene? And it wasn't. It's it's something I remembered from the video game. So <laughs> that was weird. And the next is a pretty new one, almost the newest one. But Strange Planet, Strange World. I've got it. OK. Yeah, it's like fine. One thing I noticed in Strange World, there are these TikTok videos of uh, mostly women who do impressions of what animated characters look like. And it's like the exaggerated facial movements, <laughs> like the bounce and squish, which is a very big animation technique to make things look like they're moving. But a lot of Disney movies will do them in the in people's faces to show expressions. And then in this movie, the Sun character, his bounce and squish of his face is so much that I found it very, very, very distracting. But the movie's fine. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal can do no nothing bad. Only right. meh. Um, next up is the Aristocats, which is a little bit better than I remembered, but has one of the most racist scenes in Disney history. And that's really saying something when a cat plays the piano with chopsticks and says some stuff that, that should not be said in film. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild. And then next yeah. I have Mulan, which I have the same issue with Mulan as I have with. Oh, I skipped a bunch. I just skipped a whole bunch. Oh, did you? I'll just real quick go back and just say the ones that I skipped. The Sword in yeah. the Stone. I loved it as a kid. It did not hold up. Unfortunately, it's really repetitive. Fun and Fancy Free. It's really two movies. It's Mickey and the Beanstalk and Bongo, which was supposed to be the sequel to Dumbo. But mm. then they just made it a short film instead. And they're fine, but nothing special. Mickey and the Beanstalk, I have seared in my brain. But uh, too, Winnie yeah. the Pooh, the new one, the new Winnie the Pooh, it's it's fine, but it's not as good as the, the first one that Disney put out in the series. It's interesting that the 2011 Winnie the Pooh is only 63 minutes. Yeah. And Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which are the two canonical Disney animated movies, the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh is like three short films. So it's weird that Winnie the Pooh has never gotten like a full, full length movie. And honestly, if you watch him, you kind of understand why. They're, he's It's not that interesting of a character. Oh, justice for Pooh. OK. Uh, <laughs> and then next and then Brother Bear, which I think was kind of a miss. It, it was just another one where it's like if, if you could tell me the plot of Brother Bear all the way through, I'd be very impressed. Yeah, I, I, I think again, that's another one that's solid, but um, not. Yeah, not a favorite. Yeah, you have it. You, you mentioned it's, it was nominated for best animated feature. Most of these were. 
Most, yeah, a lot of them were, yeah, anything from 2001 on, except for like Home on the Range or Chicken Little. Okay, so Mulan, I said same issues. And then next I have Jungle Book, which is good, but doesn't really get interesting till the end. It's pretty boring for the most part. And then at the end, although the songs are very memorable. Oh, yeah. So I'm we're still in three star territory. Next up, I have The Great Mouse Detective. It's fine. I, again, I watched this like two months ago. Don't remember anything about it. I like it. Um, yeah. Radigan. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a Sherlock Holmes story. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's one that's a bummer. I have a three stars. Big Hero 6, which I loved the first time I watched. Yeah. I watched it again a couple months ago. And I was like, there's not much here. I love Big Hero 6 as far as I remember. Yeah, watch it again. Or don't, actually. I would say don't yeah. watch it. <laughs> don't do that. Enjoy your memories of it. I wish I hadn't watched it again because I loved it the first time I saw it. I think also I have some comic book fatigue, comic book movie fatigue, and, yeah. and that's playing into it. That's real. Uh, Lilo and Stitch, another one like... I think Kevin McDonald makes this movie. He's the funniest part of it. And then the rest of it's like, it's it's fine. Yeah. There's an alien. Yeah. Whatever. I like it. Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Cool concept. Really cool concept for a movie. Michael J. Fox is the star. Gotta love it. Another one where like the story kind of goes off the rails at the end. Frozen 2. I have, so let's see where we're at now. Uh, Frozen 2 at number 31. Then it goes yeah. in order. Frozen 2, Fantasia 2000, The Rescuers Down Under at number 28. Princess and the Frog. Then Zootopia. I know you love it. I just don't think it's as good. We just watched it the other night, actually, my mom with my mom because she'd never seen it. I saw it. You gave it five stars. Yeah, love it. I'm in three and a half star territory here. Raya, which I gave four stars the first time I watched it. Watched it again. Three and a half. Wreck-It Ralph. Three and a half. You know, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Treasure Planet, I think, is underrated. It's a very cool take on Treasure Island. Yep, I, I think so, too. Uh, the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Heffalumps and Woozles is a banger song that everyone should know. That skit is yep. wild. The movie's solid. Lady and the Tramp, pretty good. Not as great as I remember. Bolt is fine. I probably have Bolt a little too high at 21. And then now I'm into, now we're into like stuff that's pretty good. Cinderella, number 20. It's good, but Cinderella doesn't do anything. Everyone does stuff for her. She she does nothing. Um, this movie could happen without her. Gosh, yeah, that's really true, isn't it? Yep. There was a guy who worked on it. I can't remember which, but one of the animators who worked on it ended up getting fired off the movie because he was like, can we have her do something? She doesn't do anything. <laughs> Uh, number 19 is Dumbo. Cute movie, but very short and doesn't amount to a ton. It could have been 30 minutes long, probably. I'm a white person, so caveat there. I don't think the Crow song is racist, but there might be something in it that I'm not seeing. Number 18, Bambi. Another good one, but a, a little boring. Tangled, solid, not spectacular. Beauty and the Beast. I know a lot of people are obsessed with this movie, love this movie. Guilty. Jake's holding his hand up. He's one of them. Um, yeah. I think it's good, but I don't think it's great. I think of that era of like upper echelon Disney, it's the least good. And then uh, Encanto, we just watched it. Encanto, kind of predictable. The songs are very good. Oh, yeah. But another one where these movies where they try to have a movie without a villain, I, I sometimes they don't work. Like Frozen 2, just throw a villain in there. Make it a little more interesting. Yeah. Oliver and Company, really fun movie. We've talked about this on the podcast before. Billy Joel kicking ass in his one film appearance ever. <laughs> that Street Savoir Faire song is awesome. Yeah. Not much else to say around about except that. And now into the four-star movies. Number 13, Snow White. It was the first. It's still very good. Number 12, 101 Dalmatians. There's actually a lot of good tension in that movie. My dad's favorite. Totally understand why that might be the case. Yep. Number 11, Frozen. I see a lot of people slagging on this movie now because they don't think it looks good. I totally disagree. I think the water effects are incredible. I think the songs are the songs are memorable for a reason. Only one of them's even a little annoying. The most annoying thing about the song Let It Go is that they make fun of it in the movie Frozen 2. That's lame. That is lame. Yeah. Because I mean, that song is a showstopper. I mean, it's great. Number 10, Aladdin, just terrific. Robin Williams, just great movie. Yeah. movie. Number nine is a personal favorite for me, Robin Hood. I have I just always loved it. I love the folksy nature of it. I love that Peter Ustinov is in it. I just, I love this movie a lot. Yeah, that was a big favorite of my brother and I and sister and I as a kid. So we watched it a lot. I love it still. Underrated, I think, as far as Disney movies go. Speaking yep. of which, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Holy crap, this is a weird movie. Yeah, it's dark. Like, it's, it's crazy dark for a mid-90s Disney movie. Absolutely. The bad guy is mad because he's horny and doesn't like being horny. Yeah. That's weird. That's real weird. I mean, because I saw it. That's when I didn't see it at the time it came out because mid-90s, I was like a teenager. So it was just like kind of like, eh, you know, like Disney movies weren't really in my wheelhouse then. So I didn't see them until my kid was a little bit younger. So this is fairly recently, you know, within the last five to ten years. And and yeah, like, so it was like Mulan, Hercules, Pocahontas were the ones I'd never seen. And like, yeah, these are all solid, you know, pretty, pretty okay. And as a Hunchback, it's like, wow, this is something entirely different. Yeah, Hunchback is very good. Yeah. Emperor's New Groove. That's just a bop. It's just a really fun movie. David Super Spade fun. at his absolute best. And then Eartha Kitt's doing a great job. John Goodman's fun. And uh, of course, Patrick Warburton just killing it. Absolutely. Sleeping Beauty. 
was surprised at how blown away I was by this. They changed up their animation style for this at the time. It was like late 50s, I want to say. Yeah, 1959. A beautiful, looks like a Renaissance painting and very compelling story. And yep. Meriwether is the, one of the best side characters in all of Disney film. Yeah. Moana. This was one that I did not give enough credit the first time I watched it. Watched it this time and I was like, I would watch this on Broadway multiple times. The songs mm-hmm. are amazing. It moves so well. People are like, The Rock's a bad singer. No, he's not. Now I say this, I would watch it on Broadway over and over. I do not need a live action version of this movie. Yeah, I don't really understand why that's happening other than the, the maybe they just want to do it with The Rock before he's too old to do it. Probably. You, you know, or whatever. But yeah, I think the movie is, this is one that, my again, my kid was really attached to from early, so I've probably seen it like a hundred times. And yeah, I still love it. Love it. Number four, uh, Little Mermaid. Yeah, it's just great. terrific. Didn't need to be remade. I haven't seen the remake. You have, it's right? okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, you know what's not okay? The Lion King remake. You know what is okay? Yeah. The Lion King cartoon. That's number three. Excellent. Very, yeah. So it holds up really well. Perfect. Number two, Alice in Wonderland. Oh my God. This movie is so weird and I love it. The only reason it's not a five-star movie. In fact, I've only given one Disney movie five stars, but the only reason it's not a five-star movie is it does not have an ending. It just ends. Yeah, that's so right. That's a bit of a bummer. And the number one is Pinocchio, which is a perfect Disney movie. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. I don't have much more to say about that. I hope this episode didn't go long because we did a list of 60 movies instead of talking about <laughs> Salados Amigos, but you don't need to watch Salados Amigos. The movie's you really bad. don't. But you do need to watch Pinocchio and Alice in Wonderland if you haven't seen them recently. And The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Sleeping Beauty. Those are like the... Back Moana, if you've somehow not seen it at this point. Really, really good. 